Vectors 9.4, intersection of three planes. This is a continuation of the lesson from yesterday. So um, yesterday I had this wonderful diagram that I also gave you the link to so you could have your own very, very own copy. And we talked about the difference between being consistent solutions and inconsistent. So when we have a consistent solution, it means the three planes will intersect somehow. Inconsistent, we can still have intersections of two of the planes, but not three of them, right? So in the consistent, just looking at them again, we had a single point of intersection, we had a line of intersection, and we had an infinite number of, of solutions when we had two planes or three planes all on top of one another. So in this case, um, I didn't do an example of this one, but I think you can understand that all you would have to do is write them out so that their normals were scalar multiples. You check to see if they're scalar multiples of one another and then um, reduce them and you would find that A, B, C, and D of the plane are all the same. So they're all on top of each other. So not really necessary to do an example for that one. However, on the other side with our inconsistent solutions, we have three parallels, two consistent and one distinct. We have two parallel and one cutting through, and we have this odd shape at the bottom where we have this infinite triangular prism. So my goal here today is to go over um, just a quick review of what we did and do an example for each of these four inconsistent type of plane intersections or non-intersections, right? Because they're not intersecting. So summarizing from part one, we said if these n1, n2, n3 represent the normal vectors of three planes and we find the triple scalar product which means the dot product or the dot product of n1 with the cross product of any of the other two. It doesn't have to be n1, n2, n3. It doesn't matter which order you do these in. It's all going to come out in the wash here. It's going to be the same. So if the triple scalar product is not equal to zero, that's what we did yesterday with our first example, that's when you get the vectors are not coplanar and there's a single point of intersection like that. If the triple scalar product is equal to zero, then the normal vectors are coplanar and there may or may not be points of intersection. If there are points of intersection, then it will be a line. Okay, so let's go now to the three types or four types of inconsistent um, types of inconsistencies for the planes. So again, inconsistent is meaning the three planes will not intersect. And so the, the biggest reason they don't intersect is because they're parallel, right? So if we take a look at the normals for these three, so this, these are three, um, three plane equations. And if I just take a look at the, the normals here, I would have um, six minus 15 and minus three. So what I'm going to do with this equation, because eyeballing this, I can see that, well, this one's, um, this times three gives me this one, and this times two gives me this one. The question is, if I made them all have the same X values, for instance, how does everything else change? So you could probably see right away that these are three distinct planes, but let's prove it just so you know, if you get into a test situation, you don't know what happened here. Let's put them all so that we're finding the same coefficients for the x. And that would mean um, common a common factor would be, uh, common multiple, sorry, would be 12. So I'm going to change this by 2. I'm going to do this equation times 6. And I'm going to do this equation by 3 and see what I get for my solution. So I would have 12x minus 30y uh, minus 6z plus 18 equals 0. And if I do this with times 6, I would have 12x minus 30y minus 6z minus 6 equals 0. And the last one times 3, 12x minus 30y minus 6z minus 12 equals 0. So my conclusion then would be, Yes, they are all parallel because they, the normals for all three of the planes are actually the same. They're just scalar multiples of one another. And 
The big problem here is that these are not the same. Well, it's not a problem. It's just telling you what's happening, right? So if these are all different, that means the planes are going to be sitting like this, parallel and distinct. Okay, so that's um, the actual, the numbers that I'm doing here. So number one, inconsistent number one, will match with inconsistent number one in this handout. Okay, so the second one, again, what we want to do is check the normals. So if I look here, I have 1 minus 10. This is 2 minus 20. Oh, so this one looks like it's doubled that one. This one um, has exactly the same normal as this one, but they have different D values. If I brought it to the other side, that would be D is 4, D is 8. So I know these two are parallel. They're parallel and distinct, these two. Parallel and distinct. But what about this one in the middle? So if I have this one to make it equal to that, that would give me x minus 10, y plus 13, z equals minus 4. And whoa, lo and behold, these two are the same. They're exactly the same plane, right? They're very same. They reduced to be, this one reduced exactly to be this one. So that means I have um, one parallel um, and two that, well, one parallel and distinct and two, these two are the very same. So that would be like number two in the diagram. Okay, the third one, I have 6 minus 15. So you're taking a look here to see, do I see any similarities here at all? And if you look here, if you look at the coefficients of these two, um, 6 over 4 is 3 halves. Minus 15 over minus 10 is 3 halves. This is 3 halves and this is 3 halves, right? So um, they're definitely parallel, but are they distinct? Well. If we, um, if we find the common denominator here, our common factor, I keep saying denominator, must be thinking back to grade nine or something. If I multiply this by two and this by three, right? If I multiply this by two, that gives me 12, and these will both be 12. So let's see what happens when I do that. So I'd have 12x minus 30y minus 6z plus 18 equals zero. And this times 3 is going to be 12x minus 30y. I'm sure you could probably see what's going to happen here before without even writing this all out. But it's good to prove to yourself what's happening. So you can see right away that these two are parallel and distinct. So that means that I have this situation where I have two like this. And this one, the, um, the normal for this isn't anything like these ones. They're, you know, it's, you can't multiply this up to be, I mean, look, this is 6, 5, minus 15, 4. So this one is all on its own. So it's going to go like this, and that would be your inconsistent number 3. No intersection. Well, you'd say, oh, well, it intersects here and here. But remember that all these were talking about the intersection of three planes. So the three planes aren't intersecting, but two are. These two and these two do. Okay, so for the last one, um, number four here, it's going to be just like the one on the handout, an infinite triangular prism. Now, what do you, like, how are you going to show that? Like, how are you going to know that by looking at this? So what I would do is I would start using, uh, like writing out the normals first. And I'm going to do that on the next page just because I'm going to need more space to do some of the calculations that I want to do. So let's just put this up here. Can you still see it? Yes. Okay, so normal 1. Normal 1 is going to be 1 minus 3 and 2. Normal 2. So all I'm doing is I'm just finding those ABC values. So 4, 1, minus 1. And normal 3 is going to be... 6 minus 5 and 3. Okay, so I've got the normals and I'm going to go about the same way I would if I had 
I have no clue what this is going to be. I don't know. So the first thing you're going to do is a triple scalar product. So you're going to do N1 and you're going to dot it with the cross product of N2 and N3. I'm going to do it in that order just because, just because I feel like it. And it's my party and I'll cry if I want to. So 4, 1, minus 1. 4, 1, minus 1. So I'm setting myself up to do the cross product. And I always write them all out because I'd probably make a mistake if I didn't. I'm old. My brain's not as sharp as yours. Okay, so now I'm going to do the cross product. So N2 crossed with N3 is going to give me, remember you multiply down and subtract. So 3 minus 5. 3 minus 5 is the first coordinate. Minus 6 minus 12. And minus 20 minus 6 more. So that's going to give me minus 2, minus 18, and minus 26, which I'm going to reduce because I don't like these big numbers and I don't like negatives. So I'm going to make it 1, 9, and 13. So all I did was divide by minus 2. Okay, so now I'm going to write out the dot product. So normal 1 dotted with the cross product, and 2 cross in 3 equals... So I write out normal 1, so that's 1 minus 3, 2, and I'm dotting it with 1, 9, and 13. And that's going to give me 1 minus 27 plus 26. Okay, so do you see what's happening here? What's going to happen? We're going to get 0. So 0 means that it either doesn't intersect or it intersects as a line. So obviously, just given the equations, you're not going to know which way it's going to go, right? I don't know. So now we're going to use um, our matrix, and it's going to work very nicely. Just watch this. I have to go back to the equation. Let me just pull that up here so you can see where I'm getting my numbers from. So I take the coefficients of these, and I'm going to put this on the other side. Okay, don't make that mistake. Remember, if you're writing out that this line means equals. Okay, so I have 1 minus 3, 2, and minus 7. And 4, 1, minus 1, and minus 5. And 6, minus 5, 3, and positive 1. So there's my, um, there's my matrix that I'm going to work with. And the first thing I'm going to do is... I'm going to get a 0 here. So I'm going to do row 2 minus 4 row 1s. So let's write out row 1 because we're not going to touch that one. If you want to just stop and try the matrix on your own, it's good practice. So 4 minus 4 is 0 and 1 plus 12 is going to be 13. And minus 1 minus 8 more is minus 9 and minus 5 plus 28 is going to be 23. I'm also going to make a zero here at the same time. Let's get this out of the way. So I'm going to do row three minus six row ones. Okay, so six minus six is zero and minus five, um, that's 18. Minus five plus 18 is going to be 13 and 3, uh, I'm slow at this, 3 minus 12 is going to be minus 9, and 1 plus 42 is going to be 43. There we go. You have to really go slowly. You can't talk fast and think ahead at the same time. Okay, so what does this mean? Well, look, look at these rows. So instead of trying to get 1 here right now, I'm just going to subtract row 3 minus row 2, because that's going to tell me how these are going to intersect. So, I mean, you could try to make a 1 here by dividing by 13, and then you get a fraction, and it just would get a little messy. You don't need to do that, because at this point, it's quite obvious what's going to happen in my final line here. So if I do, do row 3 minus row 2 now, I'm going to get 0, 0, 0, and 
20. 43 minus 23 is 20. So that means that 0 times t is equal to 20. And you should know right away that means no solution. So the planes, the three planes, do not intersect. The three planes do not intersect. Not as a line. If this was a line, then I would have, I would have to have, um, I could have 3t equals 0, but I can't have 0t equals something because you can't divide by 0, right? Three planes do not intersect. And there's the end of your intersection of three planes lessons for you. Okay, so we've covered all of them. Um, I hope you found this easy to understand. And if there is one from the homework assignment, um, I think I signed a whole bunch of questions to my class from a number 13. 13, I see a whole bunch of them here. So if there's one that you would like me to do for you to get stuck, just put a little note in below and I will, um, I will do it by hand. I'm not going to make another video for it, but I will make up the solution for you and I will take a picture of it and send it to you. Thanks for watching. Hope this is all going well for you.